Hi, Mark Diaz here for 2DAnimation101.com. In this specific lesson, I'm going to teach you how to do very quick character animation using bones. We will be creating our own original custom animation. So if you are an aspiring YouTuber who wants to create an animated series full of original content and original animations, this lesson will show you how. Okay, let's get it started. This is scene 10 B solving the problem start okay so open that file if you want to follow along you will notice that we have a scene we have the sound the you we have everything oh actually let me activate the camera and we have the sound the camera work everything is happening everything is ready except for the movements of this character, which is what we are going to do in this lesson. Let me show you the end result we're gonna be doing. Check this out. We will be animating the character like this. Now for this lesson, we won't be adding the hammer. I will show you how to pick up and drop objects with your characters in a later lesson. Right now, I just want to focus on animating the character, okay? Now, before starting, I'm going to deactivate the recording function. I don't want to mess up the camera work I already did. So deactivate it. And now I can do my animation using the working camera. Okay, so as you saw, uh, we need two positions. We need the character like this, lay down and uh, doing the hammering action in one hand like this. And then a second position of the character do lifting the arm to do the hammering okay like this with the hammer right here ready to hit the rock okay ready to hit the problem yeah solving problems so here's how you animate remember you can just select the character and press k to bring the key editor or you can also click on right here let me close it and you can also bring it here the motion key editor okay so now that i have it i'm going and let me make sure yes i this is a good habit to always check you're not recording uh now i'm going to position this character you already know how to use the bones and how to manipulate them okay oh and wait let's make sure we are on frame one check now i'm ready to take the first position i'm gonna do this in fast forward you already know how to do all of this if you forgot something you can just refer to our previous lessons and this is first position there now all i have to do is create the second position for that i'm gonna bring the timeline and i'm gonna set up the timeline, remember how we set it up? In the last lesson, we checked how to set up. If you want to uh, review that, I'm gonna set it up here in fast forward. First, I double clicked on the timeline to make it float. Then with the character selected, I click on motion and click on the motion little arrow, hide the sprite and layer, show everything else except for the face, then hide the sprite layers then show the forearms and shanks and also for this specific animation i also needed the head and torso which are usually hidden okay those are under hip okay now i have my timeline set up now i go to frame 23 yes frame 23 whoops right there and i'm gonna set up the second position for that, I want the character to stand up a bit. And one thing you can do to accomplish this is by using the locking feature. With the character selected, I press K. And I want to show you how to use the uh, locking feature. Let me check. I'm not recording the camera movements because I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Now, let me show you. If right now i take the hip and move it up and down <laughs> the legs are floating with it i don't want that this is a little trick if you select the right foot and click on 
lock selected bone, I'm going to lock that bone right there, okay? And so if I move the hips upwards or downwards, the foot is going to be there all the time. Let me show you. I lock it and then I move this up and down. You see, now this is landing on the ground. I want that, okay? I want that for both feet. So if you wanna do walk cycles, I recommend you use this. Okay, now let me select it and lock the bone. Yes, it's already locked. Then the left foot, lock. Now, very, very interesting, each time you are going to be uh, adding keyframes to the hip every time you have to select it and lock the bone, okay? Let me, let me do that. And now I'm ready to do the second position. Let me make sure I'm on frame 23. And now I can lift the hips a little bit because he's gonna stand up a little bit to get enough energy to hit the problem. And now I just reposition the rest of the body in fast forward, which is very easy to do because you already know how to do this, okay? Great, now I have two positions. Now, for my taste, <laughs> you see I'm playing it back. For my taste, the animation feels super stiff. And so I want to correct the timing for that. I'm gonna work on the timeline. We already have all the keyframes showing. Uh, I'm gonna double click so I can have all the keyframes and I'm going to ignore whatever happens in the, in the workspace, okay? This is what I'm going to do. Well, actually, let me show you uh, something. I'm going to modify the timing. So I can right click here. Whoops, I'm not showing <laughs> the menu I want to show you. Let me undock the timeline. If I right click on transform and choose transition curve, okay? Uh, I wanted to show you this menu. Now that we have the transition curves here, I'm going to double click on the timeline. And now look what I can do. Instead of linear, which is this animation right here, like this, I'm going to use smooth, okay? This, I could have done uh, the, the, I'm choosing transform. Whenever you're going to modify the curves, okay, do it on the transform layer. Otherwise, you will have to do that, uh, <laughs> that process on every single layer, which is, is going to be time consuming. And I just want to apply the smooth transition to all the keyframes. So that's why you can just select, let me show you again how I did it. Right click, then transition curve, and then just select smooth. And now it's a smooth movement, you see? It was like this. No, it was like this. Pretty stiff. I don't like that. I like smooth. Very, very cool. And of course, you can use uh, other transition curves like this. It stops a little bit in the middle. I love the visual representation right here. I love this interface, you see? Like whoop, a little bit of bounce, what? okay? Or like this, as if it was a puppet, right? But right now I'm gonna use smooth. There you go. Again, I'm applying the transition curve in transform, okay? Not on all the layers. When you apply something here, it applies to every single layer that has a little T right here. T, remember, stands for transform. Now, I'm going to get to the second position, I mean the third position on frame 30 when he's doing the hammering again, okay? I want his hand to go down and hammer the problem. How? Well, because I want this, uh, this is what I have in my mind. I want to be able to loop this. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to copy, actually just copy the transform key, which is going to carry everything, and then copy and paste it right here, okay? I can do that, I can select it, press Ctrl C, then put the cursor in position, and then Ctrl V, or, this is easier for me, I can just select it, hold Ctrl in my keyboard, and then I do Ctrl, click and drag. Boom, there you go. Look, there's the hammering action. Now, this is not, this is not uh, smooth, it's linear. So for this, I'm going to right click, then transition. You cannot see it, but I'm choosing transition curve. It goes a little bit off the screen. And then instead of linear, let's test smooth. How about, I think uh, for this one, I prefer accelerate. Yes, boom, accelerate. And I'm going to apply that same right here. I just select this keyframe and I keep the interface on and I'm going to select accelerate. Okay, very good. Now, let me play it. Yes. Okay, now I can convert this into a clip or I can, uh, I can also select those two and then hold control. L let me tell you why I applied the transition curve here. It doesn't have any frames earlier to have a transition form, but if I select those two, right, and then hold control and then click and drag and put it here, ah, you see? Uh, I'm getting something here. I'm gonna delete it. Let me select that clip and delete it. And as you can see, I have boom. Okay, now I want this to end around here. I'm, I'm just moving this and I when I move that, I move every single frame below. Okay, remember that. I just click and drag the top uh, keyframe that sets transform and I move everything else. I want to have it here. For me, I need this distance. And now I can just control and click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Super easy, you see? And then I hold Alt, pan the view, control, click and, da and drag. And then finally, he hammers down, then he lifts the hammer and I'm going to hammer down uh, this keyframe. Control, click and drag, and put it at the end. Okay, let's see it. Hard and painful is it to solve your own problems. Ah, this was a little bit long. Actually, it has to be here. Problems. Hard. Okay. <laughs> Just giving a quick fix and then control and drag this one. I made a mistake. <laughs> the last hammering was ve was taking too long and I forgot that the hammering has to be very quick like this. Okay. And then I just duplicated this keyframe and put it there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Is it to solve your own problems? Okay, that's it. And now we have a repeated hammering action. Let me turn on the loop. And now I'm going to play it again and again. And very good. We have the hammering action. And I believe you need to check this lesson and last one more than once. Because both lessons can be a little bit dense but so whenever you start creating your own animated series and you want to do character animation check both this lesson and the last one and learn how to set up the timeline properly so you save yourself some headaches trust me i struggled a lot because i didn't feel i had control over my character and that was because I was modifying some parts of the character, but I was not doing anything to the rows that are usually hidden, which are um, these ones. Let me stop this, uh, which are the forearm, uh, the head and torso, and the chanks, okay? Let me keep playing. 
And those layers, if you're not showing them in the timeline, those will bring a lot of chaos to your animation, okay? And as you learned in this lesson, when you work only on the, the when you use the transform, you are affecting and copying everything below, okay? Okay, that's it for this lesson. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to put a hand in front or back, uh, move any part of the character in front of his face or behind his face or in front of the body or behind the body. Okay, it's a little very, very easy to do trick. See you in the next lesson.